happy weekend, my friends. And once again, welcome to another weekend worship video from the parish of St. Anne here in Toronto, Ontario. My name is Don Byers and I serve as the priest and pastor of the parish. And as always, it's my delight to be able to worship and to pray with you. My friends, I hope you use this time of prayer as a way to renew and rejuvenate your soul. This weekend, we're gonna be talking a lot about prayer particularly because our first reading talks a little bit about prayer. James encourages us to pray. And so this weekend, we'll be reflecting on that. My friends, as we've been doing these past few weekends, I, in addition to our weekend prayer video, we also will be joining together on Sunday at 9 a.m. for our Zoom prayer and reflection time and then also at 10.30 for our celebration of the Eucharist, both in person and also on Zoom. My friends, I hope you join us. And again, that's this Sunday, September 26th, at 9 a.m. for our Zoom prayer time and 10.30 for our Sunday Eucharist. My friends, please know you're welcome. It's such a delight to be able to welcome you all. And I have to tell you, I've been hearing from a lot of people how much they enjoy seeing one another on Sundays. Now, I invite you, place yourself into a position that's comfortable for prayer. Maybe it's a cozy chair that you have, or a special corner in your home, or maybe it's even outside. I invite you to place yourself in a space that is comfortable, in a space that allows you some silence to be able to pray with our God. So now, my friends, let us begin with our opening collect. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands 
and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of Christ. My friends, this week I've been thinking a lot about prayer. I've been doing so because I've been looking ahead to our readings for this coming weekend, and I prayed a little bit with the letter of James. This weekend we hear a passage from James' letter which talks quite a bit about prayer. It talks about the prayer of the righteous and God answering our prayers. As wonderful as James' letter is, I'm going to be honest, I struggle with it. And while I'll say more about this on Sunday, I just want to offer some initial thoughts, maybe some things for you to contemplate. Prayer is one of the most fundamental acts of the life of faith. It's not something exclusive to Christians. We know that many religious traditions, people take time to pray, not just our Jewish brothers and sisters, but also Muslims and many other world religions as well. Prayer is that act in which you and I sort of let go of ourselves, let go of all our pride and all our wants and desires, and to simply set ourselves into the holy presence of God. And I'll be honest to you, that's not entirely easy. It's not easy sometimes to just step away from the world and to rest and to be into God's presence. But if that wasn't hard enough, it's sometimes hard to imagine whether or not God hears our prayers. I imagine all of you at some point in your life have gone before God with your hopes and desires, praying, maybe desperately praying, that God will hear and answer you. Maybe it was because of a friend who is ill or sick and dying, or maybe you yourself were going through something, or maybe you are right now. And so you go before God in prayer, desperately hoping that God will hear an answer. And whether or not you're like me, you might have had the experience where you pray and pray, and it seems like you don't get any answer at all. What do we do about that? Now, James, in his letter this weekend, doesn't actually help us much on this front. At least, I don't think so. James is overly confident. He says, if you're righteous, if you're like Elijah and you're righteous, God will hear and grant your prayers. But that seems too simplistic. And I don't think it's fair of a statement to say to the many people who have often prayed, out of sincere and generosity of heart and have not had their prayers answered. James, quite frankly, leaves us with a conundrum, leaving us with a question of why doesn't God always hear our prayers? And that's a good question. And in fact, I would encourage you to bring that to God, to say to God, Look, I'm asking you, and why don't you hear me? But I also want to offer something else, and this is what I hope you might think about this weekend, and maybe just reflect on it a little bit. Maybe the answer to our prayer isn't necessarily what we think it should be, but what God may think it to be. I had to wrap myself around this idea a few years ago. 
and I'll say more about this on Sunday, but as some of you know, I went through a journey with cancer and as I was going to a hospital, I would sit there and I'd watch all these people who were suffering terribly. So, and while I knew as I was going into hospital each week that I had a whole group of people praying for me, and while my condition was getting better, I struggled because I looked around and these very beautiful, wonderful people were not getting better. And I began to wonder, God, why? Why is it that you allow me to heal, but not somebody else? I actually felt a little bit of guilt, to be honest. Not a little bit, quite frankly, a lot of guilt. It took a long time. Now, I don't know the answer to this, and I'm going to be totally honest with you. I don't entirely know the answer. But the more and more I prayed about that experience, the more and more I realized that maybe God has something else in mind. God doesn't make, I want to be entirely clear, God doesn't make us suffer. But rather, God works in our suffering to bring about good. I want to be very clear about that. God never makes us suffer, nor does God intentionally ignore us. But sometimes I think God has a greater vision than what you and I have. That God knows well beyond our imagination what is good for us and for those around us. Now this doesn't make suffering any easier. This doesn't make our struggles lighter. In fact, quite frankly, sometimes I think it makes it all that much more messy. But in our Christian tradition, we're invited, in prayer, by the way, we're invited to enter into those periods of doubt and to question, those periods of question, and to simply be there and remain there and wrestle with God, to ask God, help me understand what it is that you want. And not only in prayer do we come before God and ask God to enter into our experience and to help us understand why things are as they are, we also enter into prayer to be surrounded by others. <laughs> I don't think we realize this a lot. Prayer isn't so much about getting a response from God. Prayer is about all of us coming together in all our moments of life, good, bad, in all those moments, coming together as a community and upholding, lifting each other up in that time. As I say that, I think about some of the people who I've cared for in pastoral ministry, and a lot of them will say, even though they may be dying, they will say, what gives me strength is I know that other people are praying with me and that I'm not alone. Prayer is important. We may not always understand the power of our prayer. We may not always realize what God is up to in our time of prayer, but prayer is important. It's a time for us to be honest with God, to state to God, all our fears, anxieties, our joys, our hopes, all that, and to place that before God, but to do so together with others. Prayer is also a time to be united with one another and to lift each other up, to sustain and support one another. And quite frankly, in our tradition, we also understand in prayer that we are also sustained and nourished by the great communion of saints, those that have gone before us that they too surround us with their prayers and grace. My friends, I'm not going to give you a simple, easy answer or explanation to prayer. But my invitation to you is this. Allow yourself to rest in God in prayer. Pray for one another. Sustain one another by your prayer. And try to be open to what God may be doing in that time of prayer. And quite frankly, 
know that it's entirely all right if you find yourself frustrated or annoyed or angry because God may not be answering the prayers as you wish God to do so. Tell God that. Be honest with God about that. And don't hide. Just simply be yourself in prayer. Amen. In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field, men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation, from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Once again, my friends, I'm so glad you were able to pray with us using this weekend worship video. From all of us at St. Anne's, I want you to know you are welcome here and that you are important to us. And if you would like us to pray for you, let us know. You can message us uh, by finding our email on our website at stanne.ca, or even you can message us on Facebook, on our Facebook page as well. 
My friends, a few announcements for this coming week. As I said in the beginning of the video, in addition to our weekend worship videos, we are coming together for prayer at a couple other times over the weekend. First, on Sundays at 9 a.m., we will come together on Zoom to pray and to read the scripture readings for the weekend and to have some discussion. I invite you to join us for that. Details for that may be found on our website again at saintanne.ca. Also, on Sundays, we are coming together both in person and online for our celebration of Holy Eucharist from here in the church. I have to tell you, we've been doing this, I think, now for more than a month, and it has been an utter delight to welcome people into the space, to pray together. Uh, we've had a lot of new people show up, which is ever so wonderful. And in fact, I've been meeting with some folks and they've been telling me what an extraordinary place this is and what a delight it is to be able to come together in prayer. So my friends, do consider coming down. It's important that we come together and pray. It's important that we sustain and uphold each other in prayer. So I invite you, come on down. We've got lots and lots of space for you to spread out and to be in this very holy place. We also got some exciting news this weekend. Uh, one of our former ministry interns and now a candidate for ordination, Randy Williams, is going to be ordained a deacon in the Diocese of Niagara at the Cathedral of Christ Church in Hamilton on Sunday at 4 o'clock. We posted details on our email blast. If you would like further information, check out our Facebook page as well. We put a link there for you to either register if you'd like to go to it or if you'd like to watch it on Zoom. They will be live streaming it. It's such a joy for us to be able to see some of the wonderful women and men who have helped us in ministry here to go forward and to be ordained as ministers in Christ Holy Church. So do keep Randy in your prayers. It's, I'm really delighted for him. I remember my own ordination and it's such a joyous occasion and it's a wonderful celebration in the life of the church. So do check that out and join. So again, that will be from Christ Church Cathedral in Hamilton on Sunday at four o'clock. So a word of congratulations to our good friend, Randy. Also, I can't believe we're already in fall. As some of you know, this past week, fall began, and actually it's already, it seems like clockwork, perfect timing. The temperatures got cooler, it started raining, it's starting to get that cool, comfortable fall feeling. And with fall, we start talking a lot about creation. Right now we're considering the glory of God's creation and the wonderful fruits of God's creation. And we are coming upon a wonderful feast, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Francis, as many of you know, was uh, a holy man who proclaimed the glory of God through songs of praise, as well as praising the glory of God within creation. So, on Sunday, October 3rd, I invite you to join us for the blessing of pets and animals at 1 o'clock October 3rd. So come on down, bring your beloved pet, your, your cat, your dog, as I said on Sunday, even your snake, if you'd like to bring it. Uh, bring whatever pet you might have. It might be a gerbil, who knows? I know, I'm amazed, people have all kinds of animals. Bring them down, we'll be having the blessing on the front steps of the church from one to two that day. Share it with your friends, share it with your neighbors. It's gonna be a fun time, so bring them down. Before I forget, there's one other great announcement. This week, on Tuesday at five o'clock, we are going to have Messy Church. So parents and children, you are invited to come on down to our garden. Uh, we're gonna have a fun time together, learning more about our faith and about each other. So if you can, come on down on Tuesday at five o'clock. There's so much going on that it's hard for me to keep everything in order, which is a great and wonderful thing. And believe me, my friends, we have a lot more planned, like in the coming days, we're gonna share information with you about our harvest, Thanksgiving lessons and carols. We'll be sharing that information coming up in the coming days as well. So do visit our website often at saintanne.ca and also visit our Facebook page where we will post information daily. My friends, know you are welcome here. Know you are welcome to come down to pray with us on Sundays, 
on Wednesdays for 10.30 Eucharist, on Thursdays for 9.30 morning prayer, or even to spend the time on Thursdays in this amazing, amazing space, as well as Thursday evenings at 5.30 for Eucharist. All are welcome at St. Anne's. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let God's face shine upon you always. Take care.